Nuclear energy is about to explode in a good way. And just one company out there can produce the fuel for tomorrow's generation of nuclear reactors. Maybe that's why Centris Energy is up 90% in the past month. And that's not a good thing at all. We're going to peer through all the hype and tell you exactly what potential Centris Energy has. So let's start with all the FOMO that's been generated recently. Now just a quick public service announcement. Throughout this presentation, I might pronounce nuclear nuclear, among other mispronunciations. Now I've made the excuse before that I'm simply trying to generate engagement by doing that, but the truth is that I'm mildly retarded and mispronounce words sometimes, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. So nuclear power has been talked about a lot lately. You can see here from CB Insights, the mentions on earnings calls. It's become a hot talking point, and as a result, it's gotten a boost from the markets. And I put up this chart here that's rather interesting. So I've highlighted a number of names here. Liu. So that ticker is named that way for a reason. You're going to find out why shortly. That's the company we're talking about today, Centris Energy. Then you have the uranium ETF up 63% over the past six weeks, a very short period of time. And for an ETF to move that much in such a short period of time is very unusual. You see Liu up 180% and CEG, so that's Constellation. That's a utility company up 43% in the past six weeks compared to the S&P at 6%. So what's going on there? Well, you have to ask, is this hype or has some new news happened that would increase the intrinsic value of the entire nuclear industry? And here you can see something rather interesting. It doesn't really matter which name is associated with which chart. These are three of the names you saw in the preceding chart, and you can see that over the past six weeks, all three have spiked. This does not make the thesis more compelling. And when you look at the S&P 500 performance, this is very interesting. You see the terrible tariffs. And when those announcements were made, a lot of people went to cash. Probably wasn't a smart thing to do because, well, we're close to where we were prior to that announcement happening. So what you've seen here is nuclear stocks having a much higher rebound off that low point for the S&P 500 that accompanied the tariff turmoil. And you have to ask yourself, well, what about investors that have been along for the ride longer than just six weeks? So a year and a half ago, uranium was quite hot. We did this piece on investing in uranium goes nuclear. And when you look at the ETF that we spoke about in that video, the Global X Uranium ETF, it's only marginally outperformed the S&P 500 since then. Comico, the largest play in this space and what's about 22% weighting in that ETF, they've actually underperformed. Now, when there are large momentum movements, such as what you've seen in the last six weeks, a lot of investors start to experience FOMO, and here we are today. That's probably why you're watching this video. First takeaway here is that there's a lot of volatility in nuclear stocks. So one of our Nanalyze Premium subscribers raised Centris, and here he talks about how it's the only public company addressing nuclear fuel enrichment in the world. One of two companies in the U.S. licensed to produce commercial LEU, the only company with an NRC license for HALU production to supply commercial and national security needs. Lots of acronyms here that we need to sort through. So be very careful. This gentleman sent me a rather verbose analyst report, and it sometimes leads to analysis paralysis. You want to have a rudimentary understanding of this stuff, but you don't need to dig that far into the technical details to understand things. So here we can see a glossary of terms. Liu, that happens to be the ticker for Centris, is also a acronym which stands for low enriched uranium. So all the commercial reactors around today, this is what they use. So that's a commodity that's used by the nuclear energy industry. Then you have this new acronym, HALIU, so that stands for High Assay Low Enriched Uranium, and that's what's going to be required for new reactors, all right? Then when they talk about that NRC license, that's simply the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. They have a license that has been given to Centris. They're the only company with such a license to enrich uranium up to the 20% needed for HALIU. So they're the only company that can produce the fuel for the new reactors, all right, outside of Russia anyways. Now Centris used to enrich uranium themselves back in 2013, but they ran into some problems and this revenue chart here shows something that you'd want to dig into. What happened is that a major source of their Liu production ceased operations in 2013 due to high operating costs and uncompetitive economics. They declared bankruptcy. That 
that's never good, right? And at that time, following the Fukushima disaster, the enrichment market faced oversupply and low prices. So they've sort of reinvented themselves. And now, instead of enriching uranium, they act as a broker on that side. So when you look at the two components of their business, you're going to see the LEU segment. They're acting as a broker. They're not enriching in that space yet. And you can see the entire nuclear fuel cycle. You can pause this and take a look at that and read it closely. The CTS segment, so that makes up around 20% of their total revenues, that's going to include in-house enrichment operations, which will involve enrichment for Liu and Hallyu. So they're going to ramp those up. Ramping that stuff up costs money. And here you can see their latest revenues for 2024. The first concern here would be that their gross margin dropped from 35% in 2023 to around 25% in 2024. So that's a concern. But when we look at how their revenues soared 40% in 2024. We see here a 50% increase in average uranium prices contributed to that. They also talk about this transition of a contract for Hallyu where they're moving from phase one where they sort of prove the concept to phase two. So this is for the government and it's helping to boost their revenues. They have strategic contracts with the Department of Energy for Liu and Hallyu production. That's what they're working towards. Now, when you look at current annual revenues, the majority of their customers are domestic and international utilities that operate nuclear power plants. And they have those relationships that they can use then to insert themselves further into the supply chain. Their two largest customers represent approximately 33% of total revenue. There's some customer concentration risk there. And they're moving from brokering Liu to producing Liu and Hallyu. And this, of course, will require investment. Now, when you look at the Liu market today, rather interesting, the market itself, they measure in SWUs. So they say 50 million SWUs per year. That's just a method of measurement. And then you can associate a price to that. They say spot prices reached 100 $195 per SWU at the end of last year. Now you can figure out a run rate. It's about $10 billion at today's prices. However, when you had the Fukushima disaster, that run rate dropped to around $2 billion. You can see it's a rather volatile commodity that you're dealing with. And they say their global market share right now of enrichment is less than 5%. So with these high prices, their competitors are also going to be increasing production likely, right? So as they move from becoming a broker to becoming a enricher, that's going to be a challenge that everything's going to hinge on their ability to execute. Now, the four largest Liu suppliers, this is interesting, comprise over 95% of market share. They have a production capacity of 60 2 million SJWs, but with demand at 50, it tells you that their utilization must be low because there's also seems to be a shortage of such fuels. And you look here at these various companies. So these would be firms with perhaps the exception of the first one, Russian firm, that Centris is working with as a broker, right? And you have Urenco, CNEIC by the Chinese, Orono by the French government. I'm sure I've mispronounced all that stuff. And Centris looks to solve the supply gap in Liu and Hallyu. You can see here there's a shortfall. They're going to work to address that. They say only Centris could supply U.S. government strategic Liu, just based on their license, I suppose. And of course, they're delivering Hallyu to the Department of Energy already. You can see the anticipated demand as these new reactors come online, provided that they hit the milestones that they're expected to, right? And then they pose this strong and growing total addressable market. They say $11 billion TAM by 2030. That all seems to make sense. And the catalyst for this is this $3.4 billion federal investment in Hallyu and Liu production. They expect to get a large chunk of that, perhaps if not all of that. So the takeaways here, uranium and nuclear stocks moving together either reflects hype or new information that affects the sector. Well, we talked about the bullish talking points a year and a half ago, and not much has changed since then. Sure, there's been some tactical news, but the thesis, the AI data centers need nuclear energy because they need so much electricity and that's the only way we're going to get it, thesis still holds. The strong recent six-week performance appears to be hype. And this value proposition, this largely seems to be a build it and they will come story with lots of moving parts and external risks. Now, when you look at that TAM expansion, there's actually 65 nuclear reactors under construction worldwide. Half are coming from China there, so perhaps China wants to buy some. And 
That brings up the topic of the international opportunity. But in the U.S. alone, there's opportunity enough. They have 90 operating reactors, the world's largest market for nuclear fuel. And of course, nine of 10 the advanced reactors being built will rely on Hallyu. So the bull thesis is quite simple. Nuclear becomes a leading form of energy to power tomorrow's giant data centers. Centris becomes the leading provider of nuclear fuel for the United States and other countries. Being a sole provider really allows them a price premium for Hallyu anyways. They have lots of free money from the government to build out capacity. They can use those cash flows to acquire other components from other businesses, become a leading nuclear pick and shovel play outside of just providing fuels. Maybe they go from a $3 billion company today to a $30 billion company with $5 billion in annual revenues. That's about half the total addressable market, which would seem feasible. That would give them a price to sales of six. Well, today they have a price to sales of around seven. So just some other bits to consider here. They may be unable to scale their profitability alongside growth. That's the point we raised about gross margins, especially when they're on the decline. That volatility of past margins, that's a huge concern. Now that past bankruptcy resulted from a high cost operation. Are they going to make that same mistake again? Well, when it comes to debt, they seem to be managing that just fine. Lots of regulatory and political risk here as everything ramps up. Maybe you have a new administration coming in four years. And right now, they're doing an at-the-market offering. That means they're making hay while the sun shines. It also means there'll be lots of people coming around taking the piss out of our critical commentary. Please try to keep it civil. Honestly, this firm gives me a lot of wolf speed vibes, but when it comes to how much it's being talked about, I see a lot of astrology for men types discussing this momentum name, not necessarily subject matter experts. So I think perhaps this firm is running under the radar, perhaps not so much with the recent price run up. Now, when a stock increases in 334% in one year, that's not a good thing at all. So what you need to do is bear in mind the fact that you have hype consider all the risk factors and act accordingly. And remember, just because you know all the acronyms that we talked about today, that doesn't make you any better at judging the potential of a particular investment. Be very careful about putting too much faith in teams with dreams. We've seen this before, these build it and they will come businesses. And a vision of future greatness, it's just that, right? Execution is everything. And many of these external risks they have, they can't be hedged against. For investors in this firm, you're going to want to watch debt closely alongside dilution. They appear highly sensitive to commodity prices. So you can watch those as well. Hallyu has the most promise because they're going to be a sole provider. Liu is subject to competitive pricing pressure, so perhaps not as exciting. But be very careful about the hype in this space. And just remember, there's other ways to play nuclear as well. You have uranium miners, SMRs, utilities. We talked all about this in a a recent piece on how nuclear stocks may be set to explode. Give that a watch next. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.